Next argument. Capitalism leads to a decrease in racism and sexism. Now you can see this with respect to the profit motive, for example, a prominent feature of capitalism. Suppose I'm in business under a capitalist society and I want to make a whole lot of money. That's the profit motive. Suppose also, though, that I'm a traditional sexist. I'm not, but suppose that it were true, and I'm hiring and I've got two candidates before me. One is a young woman who just graduated from university with a straight A average. The other is a young man who just graduated from university with a C average. Now, whom will I hire? Well, the sexist in me will say, I want to hire the male, not the female, but the profit-seeking capitalist in me will say, definitely I'm going to hire the female because she obviously is smarter and works harder and she's the one who's going to enable me to make more money as a result of hiring her. So capitalism's profit motive will lead people to overlook traditional sexist attitudes and as a result, more men and women will work with each other and traditional sexist attitudes will go away. We can see the same thing with respect to racism. Suppose I am a capitalist and I'm a traditional racist. Uh, I don't like to work with brown people. I'm a white person, and so I don't like to work with them. But suppose I have a potential customer who comes up to me and says he wants to buy $100,000 worth of goods from me. Now, the profit-seeking capitalist in me is going to say, well, I would like to have that $100,000 in sales. The traditional racist in me might say, I don't like to deal with uh, brown people. Right? But which one is going to override? The argument is that the profit motive is going to give me an incentive to overlook the racial difference and to deal peacefully in a win-win fashion with people of other races. And once people start to do that, traditional racial attitudes will go away.